let's finally start some coding that does some actual geoprocessing. And for that we need ArcPy. ArcPy is a so-called site package, which means it's a library that extends the Python language with additional functionality. This ArcPy site package contains all roughly 800 plus geoprocessing tools, a wide variety of additional functions that are just good coding functions to interrogate GIS data. And it's also how automatically ArcGIS Pro delivers the GIS functionality. So for instance, the field calculator is using Python script. The raster calculator is using Python script functionalities. Python is automatically installed with ArcGIS Pro. Without ArcPy, we could not carry out analysis, data conversions, data management, map automation, or any of the other things that we are going to do, like setting environments, etc., etc. ArcPy is the library that contains many geoprocessing tools, lots of things, for instance, that we already discussed, the for loops and the while loops and the range functions and the list functions, etc., etc. Also, we have code completion. That means if you don't know which command you need to use, and then it would autocomplete it for you. When you carry out regular geoprocessing tools, buffer, clip, project, etc., etc., it simply guides you through the steps so you don't forget any input parameters or you don't put, don't put the input parameters in the wrong space. So it's all very, very user friendly. You have already noticed when we worked with a Python window that we had different colors for different types of the elements that make up our Python script. So we have special keywords. We used some already here, print, uh, if, etc., and many others. They are case sensitive and you must not use these ones as variables because you would go into conflict with Python. You can set, of course, variables. We've done that. We set quite a few already. They hold a value. You can set them on the fly. No predefinitions required. They must start with a letter, not with a number, and no special characters are allowed in variable names. And then in green, we have the functions that do things, our multiplications or our extraction. Those kind of things here are in green. These color codings simply are there to help you read the text in an easier way and easier also find mistakes. So we have to import the ArcPy site package before we can do anything because that import function adds all that functionality. And then, just like the older ArcGIS used to have, various extensions like for instance the spatial analyst extension for all the raster analysis or the geostatistical analyst extensions and we can add these as special modules that again contain libraries of these specific commands and functions and so all the raster calculator functions are in here and you unlock them by importing the module and you do that here very simply, typing this in import, arcpy.sa. So it is a good idea at the beginning of a script, if you want to add specific functionality, like for instance math or the spatial analyst functions, then you import those modules and then they are available to you during the rest of the script. Let's do some very simple geoprocessing using the Python window. Remember, we're doing this in order to develop a script so that this script can be used many, many times over. Let's add by adding the Python window. And in my case already, what I've done is I put my Python window not at the bottom. I just basically docked it over here and then made the window as the size that I wanted. So this is now my central working area here. And then I still have here my table of contents and catalog and other things. And I still have here some mapping area in case I want to look at some results. 
So let's start by typing in something that Python understands. So if I simply start typing arc, you see it's already auto-completing it and it needs arcpy, it needs to start with that. So any command that is in the site package arcpy, if you start with arcpy dot, now the next level is a long list of either particular commands that are directly arcpy commands, but also we have other things such as, for instance, environment settings. And then with a dot here, and we've done this before, I want to set my workspace. And there I would start typing it in, and there's my workspace. And again, we've done this before. I can stop here, hit enter. And there's my current workspace. Let me quickly change this for this exercise. And if you follow me line by line, I encourage you to change yours so you can save your work. And now I can double check by repeating my second last command. All good. In order to prevent from having to retype ArcPy every time, we load everything ArcPy straight into our current running program. And we do that by typing in from ArcPy import star means import everything. And you don't see anything that has changed. But now, if we simply type in, for instance, this command without the arcpy, there we still have now the same functionality because we imported this. We could also import everything environment. Because we have imported arcpy, we can start looking for, for instance, the buffer command. Right, so I start typing in buff, and there already here we have one called simply buffer analysis, and we click on that. And so this is the syntax analysis.buffer. Look at the spelling and the capitalization. And the first part that it requires is the in feature because that is now highlighted. And it looks in the table of contents and finds these two features as potential inputs. And now I want to buffer some rivers. So let's put in our rivers. And I signal to Python that I'm now ready for the next input when I hit my comma. And see now the help has moved on to the next one, the out feature class. Now that is something that we have to type in ourselves. And I want to buffer by 200 meters. So within quotation marks is my output feature. I hit comma to go to the next one now to the buffer distance or the field. Maybe there is a field in my attribute table that contains the buffer distance. In this case, I don't want to do that. I will simply type in my distance. The next one, do you want to do the full buffering or just either side? We want to do full, round or flat ends, round. I always dissolve all features into a single one. And that's all we need. And I can hit enter. And as you can see, it created the output file as we define it here, fh rivers 2 cbuff200 right here. And you can see the resulting shape file has already automatically been added without us doing anything. There's extensive help for Python online for all commands. Just one example quickly here. We search for ArcGIS Pro Union command, we, making sure we're looking at the ArcGIS Pro resources. And here, 
under the help we find the union we find of course what it does nothing new to you but when you scroll down enough and under syntax now you realize the python syntax a union would be in feature out feature and in the squiggly brackets the optional parameters the parameters are again very clearly described and here is the beauty that we always have code examples and if we look at this example here we realize import arcpy nothing new here is our workspace definition then we cut doing some analysis with in this case three input files listed as in square brackets and then an output file and then some other parameters here's an interesting code example where we have three feature classes, all polygon files, but uh, this one here is given a higher priority than the other two because this parcel here obviously has better spatial resolution and accuracy than the other two. Here's standalone script example also, here with comments, import arcpy, here more comments, and without us going through here in details, you can then learn the coding part just by looking at these examples. And of course, you can copy paste the script from here directly into your own text editor, make a few changes probably to the input files, but then you know that your syntax is correct. One quick other example, let's look at the con command there. And here again, near the bottom, we will see the syntax. And when we look at the syntax of the con command in Python, we realize that the syntax is slightly different from that what we are used to in the raster calculator. Here we have our in conditional raster. Then this is the output raster if it's true this is the output raster value if it's false and here we have then the where clause the condition the code example will show that again quite clear here we have a condition input elevation if this condition is true use the elevation if it's false then in this case give it a no data value so you can go and learn a lot of coding and the logic of your commands by simply going online and quickly looking at those code samples i'm going to paste some code which i had in a text editor and here we're doing again a buffer analysis. However, this time we looping the buffer analysis three times with three different distances. And we create an output file that consists of a prefix and that consists of the distance of the buffer. So we start off by defining our out prefix. We're defining our distance list, three numbers, and we're using the known for command to loop around. So here we're just making up this new distance variable here that is then used again. And so the first time distance is 1000, and then the out name is concatenated between the prefix and our buffer string, and our string underscore buff underscore plus the distance in that list the first time it will be a thousand and this out name is then fed into the buffer analysis command so we having our input file this one here and we have our variable output names and we have our variable distances and then other known buffer analysis options on purpose, I reversed my distance list here, first 1,000, then 500 and 200, because when I'm running this, it will display the result here, 
and I wanted first the 1000 and then on top of that the 500 and on top of that the 200 buffers so we can see them all in one go. And there they are. Once you know a script works exactly the way you want, then take this and copy it into a depository, into whatever depository you want, any kind of text editor, and keep a library of those things, and then you can start copying pasting them together to make a larger, more complex script. That's all for today. Until next time.